Welcome to another episode. Today I got you guys a brand new release from GVM. This is the GVM YU150R, and I previously reviewed the YU300R, which is an amazing panel as well, in case you need a lot more power. And I'm gonna be leaving the uh, link right here so you can actually check it out as well. So before I start anything, I'm gonna tell you guys up front what you expect to find in this video. I'm gonna be showing you guys in detail everything about this light panel, everything inside, outside, and also including the two accessories they are additionally sent here, which is the barn door and the grid, but those two items they are purchased separately so stay tuned or go anywhere i'll be right back And the usual disclaimer, GVM sent me this slide for me to test it out on a gap to say anything here and all my words and opinions there are my own. So like I was saying before, I previously reviewed the GVM YU300R and those lights, they are quite impressive. GVM actually took another route instead of making those cheap little 800D panels, they're focusing more on a higher end scale here. So the 300R, if you need a lot of power, that thing is a beast. And this panel is no disappointment. I was actually very impressed with the amount of light that outputs from this light and for being only 150 watt light, and speaking of lighting output, this panel has the uh, flood type of LEDs. There are two types of LEDs that you usually find inside light panels. One is the uh, one that has lenses, which uh, helps to uh, focus the light on a certain spot. This one is gonna provide a very nice and even diffusion. In order to keep this video as short as possible, if you wanna know all the specifications about this light, I have a screenshot right here, so you can actually pause the video. And I'm also going to highlight the most important things, at least to me, and everything else you can read right there. Here are some highlights of this panel. It has a CRI of 97 plus. It weighs about 3.5 kilograms or 7.7 .7 pounds. It has a color temperature range from 2000 Kelvin all the way to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. There are 1060 LEDs in front of this panel. I love these handles here. It's particularly useful when you actually run this light on DC. If you have your lighting guide to follow a subject, you simply grab this light from here with the V mount running on DC and it can actually follow a subject. So the entire back of the panel, this red area is made of aluminum. Obviously this is also made of metal. This is also metal. And this whole yoke is also made of metal, including the base that mounts on the stand. The only thing plastic that you're gonna see here is the overall cabinet on the sides and obviously the front of the panel. So on the front of the panel, as you can see, there are two layers of diffusion. And this one is the non-removable diffuser. I wish that was removable if you need to blast a lot of light, you know, nothing in front of the LEDs, but unfortunately you cannot do that. Unless you wanna just, you know, get a screwdriver and open this here, it's up to you. But I didn't see a lot of difference because I was doing a test with my hand there on that background showing some shadows there. So it doesn't really matter if you have just this particular diffuser or both of them together. Because to have a bigger effect on diffusion, ideally you're supposed to place this panel at least 10 inches away from the light. But you can also use one of those collapsible uh, semi-translucent discs, which is gonna make the light even bigger source of light. So there are many possibilities of using light panels like this. But this is also good to actually protect the panels so in case something hits here, if you broke this somehow or if you scratched it, all you need to do is to order another one from this possibly, but it did not break this panel right there. I'm not a big fan of having to attach Velcros and belts around the light here. So the design that they actually made is actually very nice. I love this design. Look how nice and clean that is. There's a tab that you press right here and the thing simply lifts off and then closes right back on. Any accessory, a grid, a soft box or a barn door, you can just use this drop down design here, which I absolutely love. Now, if I want to get a little picky here, I'm actually getting a little tired of this now, especially on the high end line of GVM, the YU series, for example, they should stop including these knobs here because I don't think that's gonna cost them a lot extra to introduce a better knob, such as those uh, metal L-shaped ratchet knobs instead of these little plasticky little knobs right here. The YU300R that I got, the first thing that I did is to remove the little plasticky knob that they have here, and I bought from B&H a nice and beefy, beautiful L-shaped, full metal thing that you can actually attach right here. The light looks so much prettier and it locks so much better. I don't usually like to introduce prices here because they always fluctuate. Currently, the current selling point of this light is $699 US dollars. At B&H on Amazon, the price might fluctuate a little bit. Sometimes they have a little coupon going on on both B&H and Amazon. This is a commercial studio and it's open for business right now. So occasionally you're gonna hear some background noise, but that shouldn't interfere too much here. There are two ways to power this panel. In the United States and Brazil, for example, we use 110 volts and Europe and India, for example, they use 220. As soon as you plug in on the outlet in whatever country that you live, 
and it's going to be actually adjusting the uh, proper voltage so you don't have to worry about it. When you open the box, you're going to find the light, obviously, and it comes with a very long and generous AC power cord. There's no ballast, there's nothing to connect here. Everything is built in, so you simply plug this cord right here, and the light powers on. And it also comes with this beautiful Pelican-looking case right here, which has a cushion on top and also a laser-cut foam that fits the light panel. One suggestion though, because of this particular diffuser in the front here, be careful with the stab. So to remove the light, you want to remove it from an angle instead of straight up like this. And these latches, they are no joke. When you actually close this thing here, it requires some manly power to close these latches. So this is not going anywhere. You can actually drop this from a building if you want. This is not opening at all. And if you want to power this via DC, it comes with a cable with two D taps at the end and also the proper cable to hook up right here. And what I like about this cable is that it features a thread here so it's not going to be disconnecting accidentally. You simply turn and turn until it locks in place and there you go. And on the side here, you find two V-mount mounts for your V-mount batteries. In order to power this light via DC, you are required to install two V-mount batteries. You cannot use a single V-mount batteries even if it is 150 watts and also one very important thing do not have the AC plugged in at the same time when you're actually installing V-mount batteries here even though I checked with a multimeter on the actual terminals right here there is no current or voltage coming out of here when you actually have the AC plugged in but I still don't recommend that you do that because when you actually plug them two things together I'm not sure what's going to be happening internally here because there's no way for me to measure the circuit inside unless I open this whole panel and break the circuit right so don't connect this at the same time that you connect this here. Now here's the question that everybody asks me regarding how long you can actually run whatever panel with whatever amount of battery. It's very simple. It's a 150 watt light panel and most of the uh, CCT and the RGB is going to hit this number pretty close. So right now I have two V-mount batteries rated at 190 watt hour battery. What is a watt hour battery? It's how long you can actually run this light per hour. So this battery here supplies 190 watts of current per hour. Keep in mind that this light will not allow you to run a single V-mount battery. It is required two V-mount batteries. So if I disconnect one terminal here and try to turn on this panel, nothing will happen. So you actually have to turn it off and connect the cable back right here. So when we actually turn it on, you see the display coming on and there you go. So let's figure this out, it's very easy. 150 watt light panel, and you wanna crank this out to 100% full blast, no problem. I have two 190 watt V-mount batteries, so let's do the math here. 190 times two equals 380 watt hour power against 150 watt panel. So running this light at 100%, it's very simple. 380 watts divided by 150. You can actually run this panel for two and a half hours continuously cranked up to 100% blast. If you wanna run to 50%, times two, you can actually run this panel with this battery here for precisely five hours. And if you wanna crank it down to 25%, again, times two, you can run for as long as 10.13 hours, 10.1 hours with these two batteries right here. Now, assuming your V-mount batteries are in tip-top condition, brand new, and you actually don't let the battery die all the time, which also damages the cell of the battery. So every time it reaches about one bar, don't wait until the thing flashes or completely dies because this kills your cells. Not a good thing to do with any battery, marine battery, car battery, or this battery right here, okay? I was very curious to see what's inside this panel. I actually opened the whole thing, but don't do it because you're gonna definitely void your warranty and there are sealants inside this panel. They will know immediately that you open the panel, so don't do that. The reason why I do that is because of you guys, so I wanna show you guys what's inside this whole panel here. So the actual front LEDs, it has been confirmed that they are the flood top LEDs. And on the board, it also features a massive heat sink, which is adequate enough to run this panel, I would say at least 40 watts, so to have the fan completely silent. But the software on the slide here, even though you have the uh, uh, three fan modes, including the quiet one, which is not quiet, the fans do not shut down. You might be able to pick up some noise coming from the slide. And speaking of microphones, it also depends what kind of microphone you're using. So this is a lavalier, which is a unidirectional microphone, which means it picks up audio from 360 degrees. Now, if you want to use a shotgun microphone or indoors, even better, a super cardio or the hypercardio or the short microphones, you're not going to have as much audio or sound or noise being picked up from the slide here. It's a little noisy right now because, you know, my studio is open to the uh, public. I can't close this door just to make this video, right? I'm going to be showing you guys on the back there, which is very quiet in there. So let's do a sound test later with this light. 
So again, here, this video is not only a review, it's also a tutorial and a lot of tips for filmmaking and also audio. I've been doing this for a long time, so here's some tips regarding fan noise or whatnot. So if you actually uh, do this for a living, such as myself, if you actually if you're actually shooting with this light at a restaurant or somebody's office or a, a candy factory or whatever, there's always going to be noise, either traffic that you can actually hear, even though uh, through the glass windows of the actual building, there's always a little noise going or coming from somewhere. So that's not really a big deal at all. Unless you are in a very quiet sound booth or somebody's office or a doctor's office that's super quiet, you might be able to pick up some noise coming from the slide. And speaking of microphones, it also depends what kind of microphone you're using. This panel for being on a professional line of panels, it should come with everything that you need regarding controls, such as the green magenta correction, which this panel definitely features. But one thing that I found out though, the green, it has plenty of green to control, but the magenta, not so much. It does lower down to a little little bit more magenta if you need to match other lights they are actually too magenta but this panel here is on the green side uh, oriented so it's more green than magenta I'm actually a big fan of COB chip lights because of the variety of modifiers you can actually install in front of that light but panels if you actually have a panel just the way it is here there's so much you can do as far as lighting control and this panel comes with three accessories which they are sold separately it's not included with this light my favorite one is the actual grid because this light is actually very floody it lights the subject in the whole wall they are very evenly but as soon as you install this grid here you have full control so to see what this does here I actually have this light placed right there in the background so I don't want to hit that piece of furniture with the light so as soon as you install the grid as you can see it provides you maximum control so you only orient where the light is gonna go as you can see here you see the light as soon as it does this, there is no light hitting your whatever object that you don't want to hit, right? Secondly, the barn door. I don't usually use barn doors, but they actually sent this to me so you guys can see, you know, how it looks like. So when I get these barn doors or any other barn door they might have, occasionally they come loose because they have screws here and a nut on the other side. In case your barn door comes a little bit loose, all you have to do is to screw here and hold a little wrench on the other side, and there you go. So right now, the barn door stays where I want. And again, I actually took this light right on the background to show you guys the performance of this barn door. It does the job, and I actually like the fact that this barn door is slightly larger, which means when the light hits this thing here, it's easy to control with a larger barn door. This panel offers plenty of diffusion. It's super diffuse, but adding a soft box here not only makes the light source bigger, but it provides a secondary layer of diffusion. So next, I'm gonna show you guys how this light performs in front of a subject. So right now I have the light set to approximately 20% and it's facing the model about 45 degrees to the right. And this is what it looks like at aperture F1.8, ISO 250, and the shutter is 1 of a second. And the frame rate is 30 frames per second. What you see here is just a YU-150R itself. There are no other lights, no hair lights, no additional lights, no auxiliary lights, just the panel itself. Right now I have the YU-150R a full blast 100% from the subject, the ISO all the way down to 100, f-stop 3.2, shutter 1 80th of a second, or you can go, for example, ISO 500, or close the aperture all the way down to f8, or it can go 1000, which is a full stop, you can shoot as much as f10. Right now, which is one of my favorite options for even a bigger light source, have the light shining through this translucent material, and you see how gorgeous the light looks like. The camera is set to ISO 200, aperture f1.8, and the shutter 1 80th of a second, 30 frames per second. The light is currently at 100% power, and I have the YU-150R at least 14 feet away. Now, if you want to do f2.8, simply set your ISO at ISO 500, at this particular setting here, the distance and everything else. If you need to go F4, set the ISO to around 800 to 1000, depending on your taste. And if you need to go absolutely crazy, for some reason, to F8 for an interview, your ISO should be around 4000. Right now, I'm going to show you guys what the green magenta is doing here. Right now, it's set to zero, all the way down to full magenta, and then all the way up to green. So this is what you get with the greens. Going back to the zero, it looks like this. And again with the green. It looks like that. And all the way back to the magenta here. Right now I have the YU-150R with the softbox plus the grid installed. What that does is it tunnels the light so it avoids light spill. 
yet providing a very soft light. The light is at 20%, the camera ISO is set to 400, the aperture is f1.8, and the shutter is 1 80th of a second, and the frame rate is 30 frames per second. Now let's remove the grid and see what happens. You're gonna see the light getting wider and stronger and softer. Now we're gonna have to adjust slightly ISO 400. I will drop it down to 320, or if you like even darker, 250. I'm gonna leave it set to 320. Or you can actually put it back to 400 and close the aperture to around F2 and a half. And the light is still set to 20%, of course, no changes. So they provide four of these Velcros, but if you wanna put this whole thing here, it's not gonna look that appealing. And also the Velcro does not reach these edges right here. So what I did first is to cut the uh, size of the Velcro here and only exposing the area that has the full Velcro here. So you just measure with the ruler and then you cut it to size. And then as you can see, it looks very clean, just the same size as this little insert tabs right here. And I also put one on the top. I don't need to put anything on the bottom here. The soft box actually stays very well just by installing this little bit of Velcro here. I'm just not sure why GVM decided to go to the Velcro thing here when the barn door and the actual grid they slide down. And the YU300R, it comes with the same concept. The uh, soft box for the YU300R, as you can see, has the tabs here, which actually drops down on the light. But this one here, for some reason, they wanted to go with the Velcro. But after doing what I did here, it's not a big deal. It still looks pretty and just a little bit of Velcro. And to install a soft box, even with the Velcro, is very easy and very fast. So the upper side of the light is on the back here. Make sure the GVM logo faces the same direction. And before you put it in here, make sure that the Velcro has been sitting here for at least five hours. I just did this like five hours ago, so the glue can actually uh, cure a little bit. And then you just place the soft box on top of the light. Don't Velcro anything yet. You just wanna align the tab a little bit here. And there you go. Now I can actually start Velcroing. I can see the Velcro aligning with the uh, other Velcro. And right here. I don't need any Velcro right here, just the three sides. And then the soft box is installed. And as you can see, it doesn't go anywhere. So it's good to go. To install this diffuser here, super easy. Make sure you install all the way on the back so the grid can actually be installed after this here. So what you wanna do is to pull very taut like this with your fingers this way, stretch very nicely with this here. So everything is very quick. So the soft box has an angle like this, and so does the grid. As you can see, there's also an angle that goes like this. So mounting this way is wrong, so you gotta turn it around and mount the grid right here. Then you just uh, set here with your fingers. And I'm doing this very quickly, and it still looks very nice. The grid is nice and straight. And there you go. Now if you take your time to do this, it's gonna look even better. And as you can see, you can still mount the light this way vertically. It still gives you a little bit of a tilt here. But if you want to tilt this the proper way, simply tilt it like this first, remove the light out of here. And then you place it this way. And then you can freely tilt this light as much as you like. To remove the grid, never grab from here because you're gonna destroy the grid. Grab it from the uh, outside the Velcro and it's very easy to remove. Same thing for this, removes very easily. And to remove the soft box, just do this here and it's out. And now, when you don't see the white, it means the light is not hitting the spot right here. So let's uh, crank up this light to like a big amount of light right here. And as you can see, if you don't see the uh, white here, my face is not being lit. When I remove the grid, the light opens up and it also gets brighter and softer. Now to remove the soft box, I also like to put it in the same position right here. So you just open like this, it's completely out. And as you can see, the Velcro did not come off. Make sure you clean this with alcohol so it adheres 100% to the surface. I don't do a lot of DMX, but this panel does feature a DMX control. I'm not sure how smooth the ramp down from 0% to 100% is going to be or how you change the color temperature. You might find a little bit of a few steps. It's not gonna be completely stepless because I can see when I use the app, when I actually um, range from zero to 100. So this is probably what's gonna be doing on your DMX controller as well. So here's the back of the panel, turning it on. With this knob here, it's going to select CCT, HSI, RGB, or anything else here. For example, when you're inside CCT, this button represents the brightness. This is the color temperature. And these knobs control the magenta green saturation. Everything is easy enough. So let's say you want to go change to the HSI, press it in, and then your intensity here, the hue, 
and also the saturation right there. Using the app is a lot easier to control this panel, but if you don't want to use the app, it's a little bit uh, tricky here. For example, if you want to go to the effects page, for example, you press it in, and then right now, let's see, yes, yeah, so we're controlling the intensity, but nothing happens. We have to press this button once again, and then it lets you choose the effect. Then you press it one more time, and then it comes in. And then to control this part here, press the back button, and then you actually adjust the intensity, saturation, and also the speed from one to random. So here's the menu settings. First option is the DMX setting, and we have these options right here. Press back. Next will be the dim curve, then the uh, Bluetooth settings. You can actually reset the Bluetooth in case you have a problem connecting the light for some reason. And then the studio, I have no idea what that is. It's not in the manual, so you have the option to have studio on or studio off. Don't know what that is. I don't see any difference whatsoever in terms of brightness or what the panel does. Nothing changes. Then you have the frequency settings. For most things, including high speed frame rate, leave it at 25,000 hertz. If you need to change, it goes all the way down to, I think, 15,000 hertz. Next one is the fan settings. I'll get to this in a second. And then the language, you can have it set to English or Chinese. So right now, this is the quietest part of the office. There's absolutely no sound other than this fan here. Now the fan settings, when you're pressing here, you have the smart, the high, and the silence. To select the option, you have to press in this knob right here. So right now, we are set to smart, which is in blue. And then you set to high, the fan RPM is gonna increase a little bit. Going back to the smart, it decreases just a tiny little bit. I'm talking about like, you know, 10%, 15%. So it's smart, it sounds like this. I'm actually literally two feet away from this light with my lavalier right here. So this is what it sounds like with an omnidirectional lavalier. If you're using a shotgun microphone, this sound is not gonna be even close to what it sounds right now. So I'm gonna be quiet here for like a few seconds so you can see or hear the actual sound of the fan noise. Now with the silent here, what I wish this thing did is to kill the fan and of course to limit the uh, LEDs to a maximum of 35% brightness, whatever it takes, just like Godox and other brands do, right? But the silent and the smart, there is no difference whatsoever and the fan still runs. So I'm gonna show you guys all the uh, controls inside the light. It's a lot easier on the app instead of this here. So with the GVM app, they designed this very well and the updates that they did here, so nothing freezes, nothing crashes. The only thing that I don't like is because you have to actually sign in with your email. So, you know, Godox doesn't do that. Ari doesn't do that. Apple True doesn't do that. So I don't like the fact that I'm giving my email, but this is the way the app is, but anyway. So to pair this panel or any GVM panel with the Bluetooth, you don't have to go to your phone settings and connect the Bluetooth. You don't need to do that. It simply connects somehow. So right now the panel is on. If it doesn't connect, wait another five, eight seconds and it will connect. So right now I'm gonna connect here and I'm gonna go one step back. So the CCT, let's choose a brightness level that is actually suitable so I don't blow anything here. So here, as you can see, you have the green magenta options all the way to the green, all the way to the magenta. And again, this panel is more inclined on the uh, green side instead of the magenta side, as you can see right there. So some corrections in post-productions might be made or necessary. And over here on top, you have the precess, 3200, 4300, 5600, and also the dimming curve. I actually prefer the linear. You just go here all the way gradually to 100%. You can actually choose the uh, exponential, logarithm, or S-curve. The RGB and HSI is the same thing other than the RGB. You can actually have the uh, slider right here, which you can actually tune only one individual color if you like, right? So going back to the HSI, which is the setting that I'm going to be using more. So you actually have all your colors here. Now this panel is not an RGB, AW, or WW light. So when you actually desaturate your white, it's not going to be the white that you actually be filming interviews or anything for video. So. You wanna go back to the CCT for that. And you also have the color picker, which is right on top here. So you can actually point the camera to this, for example, and then pick up, the light turns to whatever color this panel is. It's not that accurate, but you know, it does the job. Then you can actually pick up a green like this here. For example, this one, it becomes green, as you can see. And then you have your gel collection from Lee or Roscoe, several types of gels right here. In Roscoe, you have this here. 
And then the source matching, you can click on all these things here. This is what you have, the tungsten, HMI 5600 Kelvin, candle, the light, all this stuff here. And also the effects, click on this button, and then you have either off or the lightning. Now, for example, for the lightning thing, most light panels, as soon as you hit the lightning, it keeps going and going and going and going. So my feedback to GVM was to actually make the uh, trigger button here, which means, see, it keeps doing this all the time, right? So you pause this here, now you hit trigger, it only happens once until your assistant comes here and hit this trigger button again. Otherwise, this is not gonna fire, which is perfect. You feel me a movie with a lightning scene there, and then somebody signals, hey, I want lightning, and then the guy triggers right here. And of course, you can actually make the lightning storm code to 10,000 Kelvin, for example, like this here, and also set intensity and also the rate. Then you have the usual police light, hit start, and then you can actually have the rate to, I think the more realistic one is like the number nine, or you can actually slow it down, or even do rate random here. You can actually set the intensity. And here they also have the rhythm effect, which all you gotta do on the very bottom left, press this play icon here, and then when I actually speak, the light actually um, does something here. But this is not accurate to the very frame or the very beat of the song. But as long as there's noise coming in here, the light's gonna be doing this. So I'm gonna be quiet. Then I speak again, the light does this again. Then you can go to the music, and then the uh, bottom right, there's a little plus icon that you can actually import from local folder, from your computer, a new recording file, or import from media library. And on top right, you can also save your presets. For example, the police, which I already saved. So you click in here, I like the rate nine. So when I hit play, it goes exactly what I saved. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you like what you saw on this channel, you know what to do. So otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.